So Jan read for us this story where the disciples are arguing with each other. A little one-upsmanship going on amongst the disciples. This should not shock us at all because they're just like us. You know, we always want to know kind of who's on top. But then Jesus wanders in and says, what are you talking about? When he really knows what they're talking about. And they all go, nothing, 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 nothing. We're not talking about anything at all, Jesus. No, 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 no. So then Jesus does this really interesting thing. He picks up a little kid. He sets this child safely, securely, firmly on his lap and says, whoever welcomes one like this welcomes me. And in order to understand this story, we need to see it through the lens of those ancient people. Because children were nobodies in the ancient world. Children were the hope of the future, but while they were children, they were absolute liabilities. They were not seen and they were not heard in that culture. And so Jesus does this radical act of boundary breaking and inclusion by saying, this nobody who in your society must be silent, this nobody is who should be welcomed as if you are welcoming me. That's what we're focusing on today. Would you join with me your hearts and minds in prayer as we prepare for the word preached? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Robert Fulgram is the guy who wrote everything I ever needed to learn I learned in kindergarten. You know that. He also tells this story. He's a pastor who's at church one day and suddenly found himself uh, being charged with the care of all of the church school children for a couple of hours while the adults went and, and did something that adults do in church. <laughs> so he wondered, what am I going to do with these 60 kids for the next couple of hours? He took them into the fellowship hall, he divided them into two groups, and taught them the game, giants, wizards, and dwarves. Do you know this game? I'm going to need to teach it to you. Imagine rock, paper, scissors, but instead of rocks, paper, and scissors, you have giants, wizards, dwarves. So you divide into two teams, and this team would get together and you would decide you were going to be a giant, a wizard, or a dwarf. And this team would also get together quietly so that they don't hear, and you would decide what you're going to be, a giant, wizard, or dwarf. And then you meet together on the battlefield. You stand face to face. Why don't you look at the people across the aisle from you? And everyone would begin by going through the sequence together. So why don't we do that today? You don't need to stand up, but look across the aisle and with lots of imaginative say to them, giants, wizards, dwarves. And then, and then your team would launch into whatever it is that you were going to be. And then you would have to think to yourself, do giants beat wizards? Do wizards beat dwarves? Do dwarves beat giants? Ah! Whoever won would chase the other team. And you would have to run to your base, and then whoever got tagged, they would be on the opposing team. Until finally, there's 
one lone child left on one side, facing an army of, say it with me, giants, wizards, dwarves. Did you all do that too? <laughs> okay, just checking. So the kids begin to play. It's going really well. They're having a great time. And all of a sudden, there's this tug on his shirt tails. Robert Fulgram looks down, and there's this bright-eyed little girl staring up at him. And she says, where do the mermaids go? <laughs> and he looks down at her and says, well, there aren't mermaids. There are only giants, wizards, and dwarves. And she looks up at him and she says, but that's not true because I'm a mermaid. I know that I'm a mermaid. I want to know where my place is. We have that change of heart, don't we? When our hardened hearts are suddenly filled with the grace of God, and we realize when we're staring into the eyes of someone in whom we are supposed to see the risen Christ, that we've been missing the point all along that yes, in this world, there are giants, wizards, and dwarves. There are also mermaids and mermen and merpeople. <laughs> and everyone in between. And so Robert Fulcrum looks down at her and says, I was mistaken. You're right. You are a mermaid. You know what? I'm the king of the sea. And so your place is here with me. Jesus takes that nobody, puts the nobody up on his lap, and says, your place is here in the kingdom with me. And so I say to you this day on this Pride Sunday, whether you are gay or lesbian or bisexual, whether you are transgendered or queer, or whether you are an ally and you have been told there is no place for you here in the kingdom of God, I say to you this day that there is a place for you. And you don't have to pretend to be anything other than who you are because you are welcome just as you are. Friends, let's go from this place today to break down the boundaries that we put between us so that the world outside resembles this kingdom of God where everyone is loved and beloved for being just as we are. Amen. 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 Amen.